All right, we're back with the first New York Sports Rapid Rundown episode of September. It's also the first NFL football weekend of 2024. Plenty of things to get into this week, so let's get this month started off right. And joining me this week is a couple of guests, but somebody who's not a newcomer to the studio. He is making his debut appearance on the show. He's a premier level sports content creator in the Big Apple. He is the founder and host of Knicks Fan TV. His name will be CP the Franchise. He's also joined by somebody who's one of the original content creators around New York sports. Her name is Maria Kiro, and the both of them join me now. CP, Maria, how's it going? That's good Great. to be back with you, man. Yeah, always good to have you here. I've had you here many times, yeah. but not for the Rapid Rundown. Maria, how you doing? I'm great. Great to be with you for the first time. Glad, yes, glad to have you here. Summer's gone well. I mean, now we're kind of transitioning to fall, but the summer's gone well. Amazing. Yeah. All right, I'm glad. Okay, we've got a lot to get into this week, folks. We're going to discuss the hottest three topics in New York sports this week, including the local football teams. They're starting their season. The Yankees trying to figure out how to close games down the stretch. But first, we got to talk about the red hot New York Mets. And Maria, I see the smile for you already. <laughs> I know that you are a Mets fan, and heading into play on Saturday, Mets are hot. Oh, They've yeah. They won eight straight games. Mets fans are happy. CP's a Yankees fan. I'm not sure how he feels about that. This is the longest <laughs> winning streak for the Mets since they had an eight game run in August of 2019. September's a good time, Maria, that you'd want to get hot, right? Oh, this yeah. This is the time you want to be hot. What you've seen with the Mets so far lately, do they look like a playoff team to you? Oh, absolutely. The Amazons are on a hot streak at the right time of the year. Uh, Francisco Lindor is playing MVP caliber baseball. And we have the tiebreak over three other teams that are really close in the race. So I feel really good about that. The Diamondbacks have a pretty tough schedule ahead of them. The Cubs, the Padres, we own both of them. So going into September, I feel really good about this. We have 20 plus more games to really show who we are, but we are on the right track at the right time. I love what I'm seeing from the Amazons. That's what you want, right? On the right track at the right time you're seeing that in September sometimes in September Mets fans haven't always seen that right. with them is there any pause for cause for you about the Mets? Are you feeling really confident about them making the playoffs? I feel really good. I mean, obviously, we got some pretty bad news earlier today about McNeil, so that's a little bit of pause for cause, but not enough. I think I've got all the confidence in the world in my team. Vientos is on fire. Um, I think Francisco Lindor is just a phenomenal leader for this team and the big brother that Vientos needs. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's any stopping us. I think we're heading right to the playoffs. I like this confidence. Yeah. This is good. Hopefully the Mets fans are feeling the same way. Now, you mentioned Vientos, yeah. Maria. Huge walk-off home run on Friday night. He's been tremendous this season. There was a lot of talk about him in this breakout season about what the Mets should do with him. What is his future with this team? Is it going to be a third base? Is he going to be a DH? Do you think he should be a core piece of this team moving forward? Oh, no question about it. I think absolutely right now he should continue to be the phenomenal third baseman that he is, one of the best in baseball. I mean, he's neck and neck with everyone. 24 home runs on pace for about 40 for the season. He's knocking it out of the ballpark. I mean, as far as his future, I think a little bit of that depends on Pete Alonso's future as well, because mm -hmm. sure, he could be a DH, but if Pete Alonso's out of here, you never know. He hasn't had great success at first, but you never know if he fills that role as well. So the future is bright. Future is bright for Vientos. I find it really interesting. Now, CP, I know that you are a Yankees fan. Yeah. I am not letting you off the hook here <laughs> at all whatsoever. I'm not going to let Maria take all of this. Has the Mets impressed you as all as a Yankees fan? I know it's hard to impress the Yankees fan. I know this. Have they impressed you at all, sir? Listen, listen. The, the Mets do this all the time where they get hot. But it all, all that matters is what happens in September. In, give in credit October. where credit is due. I, all right, all right. I will give credit where it's due. <laughs> Great winning streak. We did go to the Subway Series. They did uh, crush the Yankees Jordan. in that series. So I will give credit where it's due. They are looking like a good team. But we'll see what happens late in September and in October to see if they are real. That's where everything counts, right? That's it's late it. September, October. Can you get the job done? And we'll see. Okay. See, I just want to let people know CP was not here hating. He was <laughs> out here. He said, look, the Mets are looking like a good team. Sometimes you don't get that when you have Mets and Yankee fans up here. It doesn't happen. But there was some acknowledgement of that. Yeah. I can appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> so you. it's good. All right. We're going to see how the Mets are doing because the Mets have been very impressive thus far. Eight wins in a row. We'll see how that continues through the rest of September. All right, over to your baseball team, CP. That is the New York Yankees. I'm not sure how you're feeling about them because there's been some ups and downs, some struggles to say the least, particularly with the bullpen, right? The closer role has been a question mark. Clay Holmes, earlier this week, blew his 11th save 
of the season. That's a lot of saves, folks. And earlier this week, manager Aaron Boone said that the team's going to keep their options open. They're going to try to figure things out in the closers room. On Friday, closers role, excuse me. On Friday night, we saw Luke Weaver. He held it down. First save, first career save for the Yankees. Do the Yankees need someone to step up and take that closers role if they want to be successful here in September? A lot of optimism on the Mets side, Dex. A lot of pessimism as a Yankees oh, no. fan. I mean, as you mentioned, Clay Holmes' 11th blown save, leading the major leagues, the most on the Yankees since Dave Rigetti in 1983. I mean, Clay Holmes has been so bad. Sometimes I want to roll this Chapman back on this team. And this is the worst time for this Yankees bullpen to get right. They're in the middle of a pennant chase. And so Holmes has shown that he's not the guy. He could be a decent reliever, but the closer, I don't think so. And so what the Yankees need to do in this September, because was going by committee in the playoffs is not going to work. They need to figure out who's going to be the guy once the playoffs start. So could it be Luke Weaver? Uh, Aaron Boone also mentioned the possibility of a Schmidt or a Louis Heal going into the bullpen once they return to the rotation. They have to figure out who that guy is to get into the postseason and have some confidence because right now, Clay Holmes has just been so shaky. And the problem is, is that, sure, Luke Weaver has looked, has looked good when he's there, but the problem is, is that you need a guy who's going to be able to step up in a big spot in the postseason. Not just to be a decent lever through the, through the regular season, but who's going to step up you know, when you have a runner on base with a walk and you're down 2-0? Are you going to be able to muster up that confidence when you're on the road, the road team, the fans are on your back? Can you get that win for your team? I just don't know who's going to deliver for the Yanks come October. Okay, so you don't know, right? There's a lot of... Yeah up in the air ness, if yeah. you want to say, with the Yankees in the closer role. Is there a way you would rather see them go? Would, do you want to see someone like Luke Weaver take this job? Yeah. Would you want to see a Luis Hill step into that role? What do you want to see specifically? I would give Luke Weaver an opportunity. You also have Tommy Canely, who's been a bit more reliable for the Yankees. And maybe it is Holmes. They need to take this entire month to figure out who that guy is going to be to step up in a big spot. So in September, it's basically going to be tryouts for the New York Yankees. And whoever's going to be that guy, he's got to be able to deliver consistently for this team. All right, so he's got to deliver consistently. We will see what happens with that. But what Yankee fans should know is coming into play on Saturday, the Yankees trailed the Orioles by half a game. So here's my question, CP, because you talked about it this when Maria just spoke about it with the Mets. September is winning time, all right? We are talking about winning time here. How confident are you that your Bronx Bombers can win the AL East, hold off the Orioles, and in your opinion, what's it going to take for them to get that done? On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm about at a 5. And honestly, Dex, it doesn't really matter to me if they win the pennant because at the end of the day, I don't feel like this team is built to win it in October. And they have not been in the past few years. It's not just the bullpen and the closing situation that's an issue. Their infield defense has been a bit of an issue. You know, Volpe's been there and, and Jazz has been a revelation at third. But DJ LeMayhew's been a disaster. You, you just don't know what, you, what you're going to get from him. And so in the, pl in the playoffs, in the postseason, you need reliable arms. You need solid defense and timely hitting. And for the Yankees, I'm just not confident that they're there in either one of those categories. My issue with the Yankees is that... You have Aaron Boone playing out of his mind. You have a generational talent in, in Juan Soto, and they made the moves to go get him, which is great. You have Garrett Cole coming off a Cy Young season. You cannot waste these guys in their prime who are proven to be some of the best at their position in the sport. And so to me, it seems like Cashman and even Boone have been kind of towing the line of, of being all in and invested in the success of this team. So I'm not so confident that even if they do surpass the Orioles to win in, in, to win the pennant, that they're actually going to be a bona fide October team. All right, you heard that from CP. He says his confidence level is at a five. Let me follow up with you with this. Let's say they get hot like the Mets and they finish the month of September strongly. I don't know. Let's say they win 18 out of 20, something like that. Yeah. I'm going to put that out there. Would And the closers role solidified. Yeah. I know that's a lot of ifs, folks. I get that. Would that increase your confidence? Is there anything that could happen between now and then, basically what I'm asking, that sure. could increase your confidence saying, hey, this is a team that can contend for a World Series? Sure. You, you always want to roll into the postseason playing your best baseball, right? And in baseball, anything can happen because there's so many guys that you need to rely on to, to have success. And with the Yankees, one thing that you can rely on is that Aaron Judge is going to hammer the ball in any big spot. And then you also have Soto, and Stanton is also capable of getting the job done. So they have the talent. It's just about putting it together at the right time. If they can solve that closer position and get a little bit more solid on the infield, 
then I like their chances. All right, you like their chances. Now, Maria, we're not letting you off the hook either. Because <laughs> if I had to ask CP about how he felt about the Mets, i got to ask you, how do you feel about the Yankees? So how are you feeling about this Yankee team? And CP looks like he wants some answers, too. <laughs> we, need answers. we want some answers. We need answers. The people want answers. How are you feeling about the Yankees? I'm feeling like Mr. Soto needs to know that Queens is a fantastic <laughs> oh, world. Oh. That's the message yeah. that I would like to send out. Because my confidence level in the Yankees is even lower than CP's. It's just not their year, and it's all right. You've had a lot of good years. Okay. This is not the one. Remind me whatever happens at the end of the season when it's over that we need the two of them back here <laughs> on the rapid run now to talk some hot stove baseball because you know the war between the Mets and the Yankees fans in the race for Juan Soto is going to be there. There's some sure. Mets fans that sound like Maria that's very confident that they can land Juan Soto. You seem to be bothered by this, CP. <laughs> Look, they all do, and they have the owner to go out there and get it done in Steve Cohen. And like I said, with the Yankees, whether it's Hal Steinbrenner or Brian Cashman, I just don't have confidence that they're going to go out there and build a proven winner like they used to. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I think at the end of the day, he'll stay in the Bronx. Look, I have to be honest with you. We've known each other for a long time. This does not exude the confidence that I'm used to hearing <laughs> from Yankee fans. It's a different level of confidence, CP. And Maria, you know I'm right about this. Absolutely. We, we used to hear Absolutely. from the Yankee fan. But I feel like CP is keeping it real. I'm, CP yeah. is always going to keep it real with True. me. All right, we'll see how the Yankees do. There's still a lot of baseball to be played in September. Football season is here. The Jets and Giants are going to embark on their 2024 seasons. The G-Men, they're going to kick things off on Sunday. Gang Green on Monday. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with CP's Giants. I know both team, both you yep. guys are fans of the Giants, as I understand. CP, I'm going to start with you, because obviously 2023 was a disappointment yeah. for the Giants, especially coming off a strong 2022 where they got to the playoffs, won a game against the Vikings. What are your expectations for the G-Men in 2024? Do you see them bouncing back at all? Guys, listen. I have zero expectations for the New York football Giants going into this season because they just have not given the Giants fan any reason to have hope. There are a number of questions across the board. You have Brian Dable now going into the season calling plays again. They have a new defensive coordinator. They invested a ton to bring in Brian Burns from the Panthers. Can he prove to be the pass rusher on the other side of Kayvon Thibodeau to really give this defensive front line some force? The secondary is another question. They just brought back uh, Adoree Jackson. Uh, the offensive line, is Evan Neal going to prove that he's going to be that blue chip right tackle that they invested in in the draft a few years ago? But the biggest question mark is going to be Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. What do the he New York Giants have? He has no faith in Daniel Jones. In Daniel Jones. Yes, last year was a dud with the ACL injury. We went to the game in, in Miami where he, he got destroyed because there was no offensive line. There, there always seems to be a misalignment with the Giants and the quarterback position. Is the offensive line okay? Do they have enough skilled position players? It, uh, there's always one up and one down. And so it, it's hard to really see where this team is going to be. My expectation, though, is just to see, is there a positive direction? I don't expect this team to make the playoffs, but are they heading in a direction where you can say we, they're actually building on something? That's what I want to see with the Giants this year. To that point, do you need to see something out of the quarterback to know yes, that they're absolutely. going in that positive direction? Is absolutely. that going to be the biggest indicator for yeah. you with that? And, and with that being said, because you said you don't expect them to make the playoffs, how many wins do you think the Giants could get realistically this year? Because I've heard some different things from Giants fans. It's been a wide range, I will yeah. say that. Somebody told me as high as nine. I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah. But where do you see the Giants in terms of wins this season? If they can get eight, that would be fantastic. If they will get eight and you see them pretty competitive yeah. Yeah. in games, especially and, and late let, let me see a Jones neighbor's ticket really establish themselves. Like, I'm, I'm very excited about Malik Namus at the wide receiver spot because we haven't had a dynamic receiver since Odell Beckham Jr. And we know that LSU is a wide receiver camp. That is a wide receiver, you know, product school. And so I'm, I have high hopes for Malik Neighbors, but I just want to see Daniel Jones be consistent and really establish in this Giants offense. All right, I think that's fair. And we will see how the Giants look. And, Maria, I'm going to ask you about the Jets because – they had dreams of the Super Bowl last year, right? They thought they were going to the Super Bowl, but that went all up in smoke. Four plays into the season. Aaron Rodgers tears his Achilles. He's now back under center. Jets fans, sky high. They <laughs> think they 
can get back to the playoffs, maybe even to the promised land of the Super Bowl. What are your expectations for Gang Green in 2024? I do think the Jets can get to the playoffs. Getting to the promised land, I don't think so at all. I think that Aaron Rodgers is way too much of a wild card, no pun intended. Um, yeah, I don't think that this is their year. I'm glad that they, the Jets fans can be as happy as they are and as hopeful as they are, but I think that it is really um, quite a dream. So playoffs, yes. Super Bowl, maybe doing too, too much there. What You got something on I would, that? I would say with the Jets, like Kansas City's obviously – that it's their league, right? Mahomes is, is proven to, he's going to prove to be one of the greatest when it's all said and done. So it's Kansas City and the field, especially in the AFC. But when you look at the field, I don't necessarily see a team that the Jets can't beat. I mean, Baltimore to me is not that impressive. Buffalo at the end of the day is going to be Buffalo. So the Jets should be able to win that division. Uh, the, the West, I don't really see outside of Kansas City's being that tough. The, the North, you know, it's the Texans in the South may emerge. But again, I think that the, the Jets have the tools to see Kansas City in that AFC championship game. They have a stout defense. You have Brees Hall, who's expected to be one of the best running backs in the league. And then you have Aaron Rodgers, who, as, as she said, I agree with her that he could be a wild card. But if he can be, you know, just adequate with guys like Garrett Wilson and you have weapons there, they should be able to put together a good run in, in an AFC playoffs in well, Kansas City. You brought up Aaron Rodgers. This is for both of you guys because when you look at Aaron Rodgers, we still have to consider the age. Coming yes, off of tearing yeah, his Achilles, yeah. right? That is a very difficult injury yeah. to come back off of. He is 40 years old. You said if he can just be adequate, is there any concern about the Jets relying too much upon their quarterback who's much older and coming off of injury? Is that a concern for both of you? Well, as I said, you can also lean on the running game with Brees Hall. So they, they have weapons. I think the offensive line is going to be key. One of the things when Tom Brady was able to have success with Tampa Bay at a late stage in his career is because they could keep him upright play after play after play. Their offensive line was stout. And so for the Jets, they have to hope that Aaron Rodgers is not going to be on the run at right, 40 right. years old, and therefore they won't have to rely on his wheels to get the job done. But if he can just sit in the pocket and make his throws to a guy like a Garrett Wilson, who I love, I think they'll have some success on the offensive side. It sounds to me that's what Jets fans are hoping for too, right? It's just competent quarterback play yeah, because yeah. the team has not had that the last couple of years. No shade to Zach Wilson. Yeah. That just has not been the case. Right. And if they can get that competent quarterback play, they could be a playoff team. You think they can go as far as challenging the, the Chiefs? I think they can see the. I think they can meet the Chiefs. They can the meet the Chiefs. Chiefs. You're not saying that they would beat the Chiefs, but yeah. you're saying you can see them meeting them in the AFC. Mah Championship. Mahomes just has a way of getting it done, man. It doesn't matter what receiver he has. It doesn't matter what defense they have. He's the guy. And so, you know, it'll be a tall challenge. But like I said, I don't think the rest of the pack is that great that the Jets can't get there. All right. You said eight wins for the Giants. Yeah. Maria, how many wins would you say for the Jets? For the Jets, I'm going to go 10. You're going to go 10 wins mm -hmm. for the Jets. What, what about you, CP? What do you say? I think you can think of 12. You're going 12. Yeah, I think they're just going to have it. If, if Rodgers is good, I think like, they can have a good year. All right. Optimism, yeah. optimism for the Jets. More, more, more than the Giants. More than the Giants. And your Yankees, too, I might <laughs> yeah, add. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> a little bit more optimism absolutely. than we saw there. Okay, we'll see. Football season is here. Unbelievably, week one of the NFL. We'll see how the Jets and Giants do. All right, CP. You know that you being up here. There's no way you were going to come up here and we were not going to talk about some Knicks basketball, yeah, yeah. right? Offseason's moving along. As you know, schedule came out last month. We got to dive into that. You guys did that on Knicks Fan TV. When you look at where the Knicks stack up in the league, right, and that's what everybody's trying to do once the schedule comes out, there's a question as to are they contenders or not? But I'd love to hear from you. How do you think the Knickerbockers stack up with the rest of the teams, not just in the league, but specific, specifically in the Eastern Conference, right? Because a lot of talk is going to be about Boston. You're going to also hear it about Philly. How do you like where the Knicks are right now against those two teams? I love how the Knicks are stacked up against the rest of the pack. I think they are tailor-made to make a championship run, especially in this era where dynasties, I think, are going to be a thing of the past. There's going to be a lot more parity in the league uh, going forward for seasons to come, especially with the introduction of the second apron. But for the Knicks, as a roster, I believe they have everything they need to be a contender. You have two all-stars in Brunson and Julius Randle. Their defense is going to be stout. When you talk about OG Ananobi and Mikhail Bridges as your, your cornerstone, your pillars on that wing and, and what they're going to be able to do from a team concept, 
as team defenders. Their bench is going to be strong. When you move DiVincenzo and Hart to the bench, Miles McBride had a fantastic year last season with the Knicks, especially shooting. And so his experience is going to take it up a notch. I believe that they will maintain their rebounding edge, especially with Randall and Mitchell Robinson, Josh Hart being one of the best rebounders across positions. The wild card will be their health. Well, can they stay healthy, especially Mitchell Robinson, OG Ananobi, who just signed a major deal with, uh, with the Knicks last offseason, as well as Julius Randle. Their health is going to be very important, as well as the center depth. That is going to be key, because if Mitchell Robinson goes down, where would they fall? But I believe that they'll be right up there uh, in the East with the rest of the pack. Look, the vibes are good. The vibes are immaculate. This <laughs> yeah, is something yeah. we have not heard from a long time. Maria, you're also around a lot of Knicks content. You have been for quite some time. How are you feeling about this Knicks team going into this year? Yeah, I think the sky is the limit for this Knicks team. I mean, I'm the forever optimist when it comes to my Knicks, but I truly think that this is our year. Like CP said, we are built to beat everybody else in the East. Um, I think Jalen Brunson gets better with every minute that he plays, with every added responsibility that he has. He's just turned into such a stellar leader. Obviously, adding that fourth Nova Nick, um, our chemistry is just unquestionable on the court, right? Um, but similar to CP, I also agree that health is the question mark, right? Especially at that center position. We already know Hartenstein is going to be missed by everyone, but we're going to feel that a lot more if Mitch does have health problems. So I don't even want to put that in the air. I do think that if Mitch is healthy, you know, he's a potential defensive player of the year candidate. Mitchell Robinson is an amazing offensive rebounder. He is you know, he's our cornerstone when he's healthy. So can he stay that way? And if he does, then the Knicks are going straight to the top. If he doesn't, I think the Knicks are actually not done making moves either. So we'll see what else they have left. Um, they've made some very smart moves thus far. Obviously, the, the player of the team friendly deal that, that Jalen Robinson took, I'm sorry, that Jalen Brunson took, that um, also Mikhail Bridges took. Like, this is a team that is poised to win now and in the future. So I like where we're headed. This is our year. This is the next year. I love it. I love it. I can't wait for basketball season. No, yeah. we just talked about football, but go ahead. And, and a couple more things. Like, when you, when you think about the rest of the pack, you think about, obviously, Boston is at the top of the right. pack. Uh, Philadelphia, Milwaukee even. I have to put some respect on their name. I mean, they finished third in the East just through turmoil with Dame and, 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 uh, and Giannis. You also even think about the Pacers. When you think about their best players, they are on the forward wing side. Um, Tatum and Brown. Embiid, you have uh, Siakam, you have Giannis. But what the Knicks have in Ananobi and Bridges is that wing depth and versatility to be able to stand up with those guys. I mean, we saw OG Ananobi taking on Joel Embiid. We're going to see Ananobi and Bridges taking on Tatum and Brown. And so they can now go into these matchups being confident that these guys can help stand up on the defensive end. I think that's going to be wonderful for this team. Also, when you think about those teams that I mentioned, especially the Celtics, the Sixers, and the Bucks. And when it comes to the regular season, load management could be an issue here for these guys. Mm. I mean, the Celtics are going to be missing Kristaps Porzingis. We all know Joe, you have to expect Joel Embiid mm -hmm. to be missing games. And what will the, the, the Bucks do when it comes to Giannis and even Chris Middleton to get them to April and beyond? And so I think you knowing Tibbs, knowing Tibbs and the Knicks, they're going to go pedal to the metal for the mm -hmm. regular season. Yeah. And so I do think that will also, by default, allow the Knicks to even potentially uh, be the number one seed in the East. I think that's one of the things that you and I will definitely talk about this more as the season goes on. I'm intrigued to see how Tibbs handles this season. Does he scale back a little bit? Does likely he worry not. about, likely not, <laughs> I know. But does he think about the bigger picture, right? In that you want to get this team as healthy as possible, even though the Knicks don't have as much health concerns as some of the other teams that CP just mentioned, you want to get them as healthy as possible getting there. And then the other point that you mentioned there with the Wings, now, you call them Wingstop. I think you told me that out in Vegas Wingstop, where we, yeah, we saw each yeah, other. Wingstop, yeah. which I love the name, right? Wingstop is going to be such an advantage for the Knicks mm -hmm. going forward, and that's going to be something really exciting about this season. So, excited. Basketball season is right around the corner. That means a lot of great content coming from CP. CP will be a guest multiple times, I'm sure, on New York Out Games. So, we will definitely talk some more there. But, CP, I also want to talk to you about this because I've spoken to you about this many times. You've been doing your thing, creating content around the Knicks growing Knicks fan TV for quite some time. And I always give you a huge salute for that, man. Salute to you because you do such a great job. But what has the journey been like for you? Because I think a lot of people may or may not know this, to getting to where you are and building Knicks fan TV to where it is. And then I guess the second part of my question with that is, what do you see as far as the future for Knicks fan TV? Where do you see this going? 
the, the journey's been fantastic. It, it's been fruitful. It's been rewarding. Uh, just growing as a content creator and growing with this team. I mean, when we started Knicks Fan TV, this team was in the doldrums of the NBA. And we always joke on our channel that we did a whole season of Knicks Fan TV when this team went 17 and 65. And fans would joke and say, man, what, what do we talk about during those days? And so now to see the team where they are as uh, true contenders in the NBA, it, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time for the channel. I also have to commend uh, the partnership that we've had with SNY, you know, coming on this show, uh, being on, shout out to my guy Ian Begley, being on his show, the putback with Ian Begley. I'd have to say that SNY has really been at the forefront of embracing the independent content creator, not mm. just Knicks Fan TV, but several other aspiring Knicks podcasters, Knicks Film School, shout out to our guy Jonathan Mackley, who's shout also been on, on, this, uh, on this program. So I think SNY deserves a lot of credit for really uh, bringing the independent content creator into the fold. And, and so that's been very uh, great to see. But I would say the most rewarding thing, honestly, has been building with the fans and building with people. Uh, because I've always told people over the years that it's bigger than the team and it's bigger than just speaking on wins and losses. When we go out on the road and we go to different cities or we go to our watch parties and you're actually getting out to touch the people that are watching you night in and night out and they show their appreciation. And for some people, you know, Knicks Fan TV has really gotten them through very tough times. I mean, yeah. you look at what's going on outside of the sports world, it's tough out there. And, and there's a lot of ad animosity. There's a lot of you know friction and divide between people. And so for us to kind of bring people that joy, whether it's for one hour or two hours a day or a week, that's what's been the most rewarding for me and what keeps me going. I think it's been really dope for me too to watch too. You right because I've I've come out to a bunch of your events. I've been to many of your events and I've seen you guys out there and I've seen the joy from other fans and just the Knicks community and. For the most part, pretty much everybody, it's been all love. I can truly say that. And there's, you know, you support Macri, Jonathan Macri, and Nick's Film School, and vice versa. And you guys have collaborated together. And out in Vegas, the, me, you, and yeah, Andrew Claudio, yeah, yeah. we were all doing something out there, right, together. And everybody works together. So I've seen that joy from Nick's fans. So for me personally, I just want to say this publicly, watching it firsthand has been beautiful. And me personally, you and I have talked about this, I have a strong... Love, I will say, I'll put it like this, love for the independent content creator because that's how I started. That's how I got my start. So I love seeing what you're doing. Appreciate it, man. Continue to do it. Both of you guys continue to do it. Be great. The Mets got to continue to be high. Oh, yeah. The Yankees <laughs> got to be better so yeah, CP yeah. can smile a little bit more <laughs> about the Yankees. He's trying to have some good vibes. The Giants got to be better. The Giants aren't going to do it for him. Because I'll tell you what, CP talked about 2017. In 2017, if I would have said to CP, hey, uh, seven years from now, the Knicks are going to be the team that you believe in the most yeah. and you have the most confidence right. about. We'd have been like, I don't know if I can see that. Sure. Now the Knicks have CP smiling. The Yankees have them. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm not really sure what emotion to say for you with the Giants right now, bro. It's, I don't really know. Just it's that emoji it. where it's just like, you know, just lines for the eyes and lines for the mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, uh, whatever, man. Yeah. And I'll then, be watching every day. Though. You'll every be day. you'll be watching. Yeah. And Maria, hopefully the Mets can... Uh, Keep yeah, let's close this out. Yeah. As well, too. You have a lot of confidence, and I, and I like that, too. That is CP, the franchise founder, host on Knicks Fan TV. Also, Maria Caro. Check out her work as well. Great supporter of content creation throughout New York sports. I'm glad I had both you guys up here on the Rapid Rundown for the first time. Not your first time at the desk, CP, but it was Maria's first time. Yeah. Maria, you handled it like a champ. Great time being here. Yeah, yeah thank you. You were great. <laughs> CP, the professional that you always are. Got to have you back on the Rapid hey, Rundown. Anytime, man. Always the sea was not too you. hot for both of you. <laughs> now that's all I know. Check out their work. Thanks, guys. And we will see everybody next week on the New York Sports Rapid Rundown.